All right, so uh, we've learned the extended Bayes theorem, um, and uh, now in this uh, video, uh, we're going to illustrate its value. Okay, uh, how how does it help us? So um, so take a look at the base rate fallacy um, handout. Uh, it's it's on uh, Blackboard. I should say base rate fallacy illustration of the value of Bayes theorem. I'll just read it out loud here. You are wondering whether you have a rare disease. You take a test that 99% of the time correctly says you do have the disease if you have it, and 99% of the time correctly says you don't have the disease if you don't have it. This, so it seems like a pretty good test, right? Okay, this disease is present in 0 .0001 of the population. You take the test and it says you test positive for the disease. What's the probability that you have the disease given that you tested positive? Now, as soon as you read this, you should be, I mean, or as if, if you found out about this, you would think, and you tested a positive, you'd be like, oh, crap, I probably have the disease. Uh, well, that's not quite so. And this is going to be the value based theorem. And it's where, um, I mean, this sort of, these sorts of questions has even, have even led doctors to think, oh, you know, um, that person probably would have the disease. Uh, so this is where probability theory is helpful. Okay, so let's um, let's think through this carefully. Philosophy is best done slowly. So let D be I have the disease. And then let T uh, be I tested positive. All right. Now what we want to know here is, what's the probability that you have the disease given that you tested positive? Okay, so that means you should be writing, what's the probability of uh, D given T? Okay, now, um, okay, so now that we have that, we can quickly know how to apply the extended base theorem. So uh, let's take a look at that right now. Um, equals. Okay, I'm actually going to switch these around because if you notice this and this are the same, they're just uh, um, uh, they're just flipped. So um, so probability of t times uh, wait, uh, I didn't do that right. Uh, where's my eraser? Okay, probability of d times the probability of uh, p given d over, now I can use the, uh, uh, apply the uh, law of total probability to probability of t. So normally you just, you could just have, in other cases of base theorem, you could just have this at the bottom, but uh, we're going to want to apply the law of total probability to it. So we're going to have Uh, yeah, not D times the probability of T given not D. Oh, uh, yeah, I got that right. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So let, let's start filling in the blanks. So uh, uh, first thing you want to look at um, is some of the numbers we have in this problem. So you take a test that 99% of the time correctly says you have the disease if you have it, okay? So 99% um, likely to say you test positive if you do have it. Now that's basically giving us the probability of T given D, right? The probability that uh, you'll test positive given that you have the disease, that's gonna be 0.99, okay? So let's just do this one at a time. Oh, uh, that's why. times 0.99 divided by, so we know that now, probably t given, so that's going to be uh, probability of d times 0.99 plus, okay, now the next thing we want to do is read the next part of the uh, problem, and 99% of the time correctly says you don't have the disease if you don't have it. Now, uh, that would be saying, uh, says 
you don't have the disease, if you, it says you don't have the disease, so that'd be given that you don't have it, okay? Now, you don't see any of that here, okay? But it's the, the probably that you, it says you don't have the disease, giving you that you don't have it. Um, if that's, uh, what, 0.99, oops, then we can still calculate this. What's the probability that you do? It will tell you that you have the disease if you don't have it. And that's going to be 0.01. It's going to be 1 minus 0.99. Uh, so if it 99% of the time says you don't, the test tells you you don't have the disease given that you don't have it, that means 0.01 of the time it'll tell you you do have the disease when you don't have it. Does that make sense? All right. So um, we're going to have a probability of not D uh, times also 0.99. Um, maybe I should have, oh, sorry, not 0.99, but 0 0.01, because you have to, uh, yeah, I explained that just a bit ago, so 0.01. Okay, so there's one more number that we have to fill in, uh, which is, uh, what's the probability that you have the disease before you got that information that you tested positive? Okay, this is the crucial number that people forget to calculate. And this is why this is called the base rate fallacy. The base rate is just, what is the prior probability that you have the disease? That's what people call the base rate. And we see that it's in 0 0.0001 of the population. Okay, so that's gonna be uh, one of the population. So that's probably the age of the disease. That's 0 0.0001 times 0.99 plus, okay, I don't think we need this anymore. Um, okay, now, given that the probability of, that you have the disease is 0 0.001, what's the probability that you don't have the disease? Oh, that's going to be 0.9999, right? Okay, did I get that right? Yes, I did. And that's going to be times 0.01. Okay, now uh, this year, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to have to put in the calculator, but after you put in the calculator, I did it, a, uh, sorry, after you did put, put in the calculator, I did it ahead of time, and the answer is going to be 0.0098, uh, zero zero okay, so what's the probability that you had the disease given that you tested positive? It's almost it's almost a one percent. So it's all you almost have just a one in one hundred chance of having the disease. Okay, what was the problem? Uh, people fail to incorporate the base rate, which is the prior probability, uh, uh, and uh, and that's why now that that's why where people tend to make a mistake. People forget about prior probabilities. This is going to be very important for the fine tuning argument. Okay, now um, now. You might think, oh, it's so low. I mean, what's the value of testing positive then? Well, um, initially, the probability that you were that you had the disease was 0 0.0001, right? Which is way less than one percent probability. It's like one one hundredth of a probability, one one hundredth of that. Once you test positive, now you're about one percent probability. Okay, so it's gone up quite a bit. And if you took the test one more time. You, this would be your new prior probability, and you take the test, and then your probability would even increase. So it's not like these tests are valueless, but uh, the point of this base rate fallacy exercise is to show us the value of knowing the prior probabilities. Now, what I do plan to have in, in the test is I'm asking you a question like this with the base rate fallacy. I'll probably just use some different numbers, use a slightly different example, but it'll be formulated like this. So make sure you understand how I plugged in these numbers. Okay, and if you have any questions about how I did that, uh, we can talk about it. All right, so that's an illustration of the value of the base rate fallacy, or sorry, the value of learning how to use the extended uh, base theorem and calculating probabilities. Um, and uh, with that, uh, we'll have to end here.